Hello, welcome back to Reese's Attic. Well, I've been so excited to get this book out, this Bible, the study Bible version out and get this talked about, but being lazy and being occupied with the other things, I have um, just put it off and put it off. One of the things that has taken place is my sister did pass away. Of course, that's been a couple of months ago now, but, you know, it was very uh, intense. I mean, she had had an illness, a lengthy illness, but she didn't suffer, praise God for that. And um, she did get to go home and be with uh, Jesus. Hallelujah. But I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. And one of the things that I want to do is talk to you about this Bible. Now, this is going to be a two-parter. I'm going to read the book of Jude out of this version because I don't think I have read this version um, yet. But this is the box that it came in, and this is what it looked like. And I'm going to be honest with you, this is the reason why I got it. Also, it was, um, I go to christianbook.com, and a lot, they'll have closeouts where they got like 10 maybe Bibles. These Bibles aren't being printed anymore. This is what they have left, and they discount them deeply. And uh, I love just getting Bibles. Um, I should love reading it more. And hopefully one day I will get into that, that good habit. But this is the Holman version. The H-O-L-M-A-N. Let's see. Holman Christian Standard Bible. Okay. And it is a true translation. It's not a paraphrasing. A group of people got together and decided to give translation another shot. All right, I'm going to read to you the introduction, and then I'm going to read to you the one-chapter book. Arthur, author, Jude, the half-brother of Jesus. The date. Jude was probably written before Second Peter, which was written between the dates of... 62 and 64 AD. The brother of Jesus writes a short letter that warns loyal Christians against teachers who lead people away from Christ. Jude's language is filled with Old Testament references. Some passages closely resemble parts of 2 Peter, who borrowed from whom is a question about which scholars still debate. <clears throat> Something we do today, we still borrow, we quote from other people's writings. The mission of God, as this short epistle describes, is the building up of Christians in the faith. Verse 3, by faith Jude means the objective teaching of the gospel, not the subjective response of believers. Important as that is, Jude's purpose in writing is to conserve the faith which was preached and taught. While a threatening opposition snatches the vocabulary of faith, changing it to fit the inventive falsehoods of heretical teachers, who in his or her right mind challenges the mission of God, careless of the power they try to manipulate. In Jude's letter, 
we all know are the objectives he used to describe them. Ungodly, dreamers, blasphemers, defilers, verses 8, 4, dangerous reefs, verse 12, waterless clouds, verse 12, and more. By that roster of attributes, few people would be attracted to them. But Jude knows that all of Christian history has since shown willful people bent on evil will often adopt the appearance of faith as a means of gaining power. Still true today. One need only recall Hitler's frequent use of Christian symbols and institutions to see how dangerous this strategy can be. Resist them, Jude warns. Resist the lies by looking continually towards Jesus. Be fully dependent on the Holy Spirit. Pray and encourage others. Remember God's love and mercy. Give no ground to the grumblers. Their corruption is all the evidence Christian needs. Christians need that the mission of God has been perverted in their teaching. They follow the God of self, of self-indulgent curiosity. Their pitch may be attractive initially, but woe to them, Jude writes in verse 11. Woe, not a very strong word these days. No one hitting his thumb with a hammer will cry, woe. For Jude, however, woe is a fork in the road. Follow the faith to God. And eternal life follow woe to darkness a symbolic term for the loneliness desperation and hopelessness of life without God Jude sees the choices these liars have made every step takes them further from the truth Jude ends his letter with a doxology, a formal closing that teaches, blesses, and praises, verses 24 and 25. Perhaps you've heard it. Frequent worshipers know it by heart. Now it is yours to invoke on your loved ones or your friends. God's mission is expressed through doxologies like this. Blessings that create wind at your back along the faith road. Praises that center your day on the majesty of God and the salvation won by Jesus Christ. In your prayers for the sick, for the wandering, even for those who lean toward error, use this doxology. It will focus your prayers on the power and mission of the God who loves forevermore. And I'm going to read the whole book of Jude. But let's now let's just read the last. now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, now, and forever. Amen. Praise God. Now, I'm going to read the Holman Translation. Again, this is a true translation where they went back to all the uh, oldest of trans, uh, evidences of the Word of God for this book, and they translated it into modern English. Starting now, Jude, a slave of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. To those who are called loved by God, the Father, and kept by Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. 
Jude's purpose in writing. Dear friends, although I was eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I found it necessary to write and exhort you to contend for the faith that was delivered to the saints once for all. For some men who were designated for this judgment long ago have come in by stealth. They are ungodly, turning the grace of our God into promiscuity and denying Jesus Christ, our only Master and Lord. Apostates, past and present. Now I want to remind you, though you know all these things, the Lord first saved a people out of Egypt and later destroyed those who did not believe. And he has kept with eternal chains in darkness for the judgment of the great day the angels who did not keep their own position but deserted their proper dwelling. In the same way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them committed sexual immorality and practiced perversions, just as angels did, and serve as an example by undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. Nevertheless, these dreamers likewise defile their flesh, reject authority, blaspheme glorious ones. Yet, Michael the archangel, when he was disputing with the devil in a debate about Moses' body, did not dare bring an abuse of condemnation against him, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these people blaspheme anything they don't understand. What they know by instinct, like unreasoning animals, they destroy themselves with these things. Woe to them, for they have traveled in the way of Cain. They have, ban they have abandoned themselves in the error of Balaam for profit and have perished in Korah's rebellion. The apostate's doom. These are the ones who are like dangerous reefs at your love feasts. They feast with you, nurturing only themselves without fear. They are waterless clouds, carried along by winds. Trees in late autumn, fruitless, twice dead, pulled up by the roots. Wild waves of the sea, foaming up their shameful deeds. Wandering stars, for whom the blackness of darkness is reserved forever. And Enoch, in the seventh generation from Adam, prophesied about them, Look, the Lord comes with thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict them of all their ungodly acts that they have done in an ungodly way and of all the harsh things ungodly sinners have said against him. These people are discontented grumblers, walking according to their desires. Their mouths utter arrogant words, flattering people for their own advantage. But you, dear friends, remember what was predicted by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They told you, in the end time, there will be scoffers walking around to the, according to their ungodly desires. These people create divisions and are unbelievers, not having the Spirit. Exhortation and benediction. But you, dear friends, as you build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, expecting the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for eternal life. Have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire. Have mercy on others, but with fear 
hating even the garments defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory blameless and with great joy to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord be glory, majesty, power and authority before all time, now and forever. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now this is a reading again in the Holman translation. Uh, let me get the, the full title of it again. The Holman Christian Standard Bible. All right. Now, I'm, I've read that to you, and I'm going to say goodbye. Then I'm going to come back again with another video explaining the tools that are available to you in this Bible. But wasn't that a rich, very rich and beautiful reading of, uh, not, not my reading, but the Word of God, the fact that it was the Word of God. Thank God for His Word. Praise God. All right. Check out my next video. I will leave a link for it down in the bottom. God bless you. Have a great one. Bye-bye.